So you've got a DJI Neo and you're trying to produce beautiful cinematic FPV footage, but you're unsure whether to use Rocksteady or Gyroflow to give you the best possible results. Well, to answer that question, have a look at the following footage side by side and see if you can spot a very crucial difference between what you get out after those two types of stabilization. So hopefully what you would have noticed with Rocksteady in particular is that the movement on the yaw axis, so if you're doing banked yaw turns or even flat yaw turns, it's a very jerky sort of bitty movement. It's almost like the drone's hunting the movement you're intending. And I'm not sure if that's the drone itself causing that or if it's the stabilization or maybe a bit of both. But the bottom line is it looks very unsightly and not very cinematic because for FPV footage to look cinematic, you want it to be smooth and buttery and flowing and you're kind of not getting that if the drone's doing this. Fortunately, Gyroflow alleviates that problem to a massive extent and gives you great results. So at the end of this video, I'll run you through a super quick way of ensuring that you capture Gyroflow ready footage and really quickly how you can import that into Gyroflow. But for now, I'm just gonna take off again, run you through what I'm flying, what I'm talking about, what the issue is, if you haven't quite sort of spotted it yet, and then I'll talk to you at the end. So let's take off. By the way, it is quite windy today. I've just measured it about 10 miles an hour at ground level. So that's getting close to the maximum limit that DJI recommend for the drone at 18 miles an hour. Actually feels even faster than that. So we'll see how it cobs. But for demonstrating rock steady issues, that's not a bad thing because you want a bit of wind to shake it around a bit. All right. Okay, so flying around at about 30 degrees camera tilt. Just gonna do a little bank turn, stabilizing in rock steady. And I would say my FPV feed doesn't look too unstable. I mean, the your movements on, it's a bit jerky, but it's windy up there. But um, it's not really, well, particularly on the yaw axis, it's not too jerky. So it might just be a stabilization thing. And I mean, from my experience in gyroflow, the issue is a lot better, so maybe it is that, but I'm just going to do some bank turns. I'm going to keep it low to the ground where it tends to be more smooth. And just do a bank turn this way. And do one around this tree. In my FPV feed, the yaw movements aren't too unstable, but it's a bit hard to tell really because it's generally rocking around so much in the FPV feed anyway. I'm just gonna fly around here again. I'm just gonna do a bank turn, little bit of roll, mostly yaw. Skimming in the top of the trees. When nicely stabilized, this sort of footage could look really, really beautiful. So what you're looking for is nice, smooth movements, nothing too yanky and jerky. And yeah, there you go, that's shaking a lot, but that's just because it's windy. So I've now switched into non-stabilized recording, which is simply done by switching into 4x3 recording. And that disables your image stabilization, but ensures that your gyro data is being recorded ready for Gyroflow to do its magic. So I'm going to switch it back into manual mode. And I'm going to do the same thing to some bank turns. I mean, it's jerky and I mean, not particularly pleasant to fly in FPV because it's a small drone and it's undertuned like all DJI drones, but that doesn't matter. So I'm just going to Very turbulent above those trees, but 
that doesn't matter either <laughs> hopefully we can stabilize it Oi, hello bird flying around just gonna again fly around this tree try not to hit it I must say that considering the wind out there, it's blustery, turbulent, far from calm, and it's coping all right. I mean, it's not a, it's not super smooth or anything, but it's not like flying a kite or anything. So I'm actually a bit impressed with how it's handling the wind. And there you go, doing some bank turns again. And hopefully if I show the stabilized footage, you can see that this is a lot smoother now, that we're not getting that jerky movement, we're getting nice, smooth turns, which look more cinematic. I'll do one more over these trees. So my first battery for this flight, by the way. So battery life is also actually better than I expected. When DJI quotes something like 18 minutes, I normally expect about 10. Um, you can easily get 10 out of this, if not more. So, so I'm just doing another quick little bank turn. Now when you stabilize this, you will see the sky doing funny, funky things, moving like it's like a tapestry in the background. That's just the nature of the stabilization. You can't do much about it, but as long as the foreground is largely nicely stabilized, that's more important to me. All right, that's enough of that. So I'm just gonna come in and land. Okay, so that, so that completes that flight. Um, hopefully that's demonstrated the issue that I'm talking about. Um, in my view, gyroflow at the moment, unless DJI can improve that sort of issue, if it's an issue, it might just be because it's a small drone with limited processing power. Hopefully it can be fixed. If not, gyroflow does produce better results in my view. So I would very, very, very strongly recommend to use gyroflow if you're after cinematic footage. If you're not too worried about it being cinematic, then of course, Rocksteady will give you quick, instant results. If you're trying to post on social media, you don't have access to Gyroflow. Of course, Rocksteady has a purpose. But for cinematic footage, definitely Gyroflow. So as mentioned previously, easy way to enable Gyroflow ready data or footage. Ensure that you just um, select the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. That disables your image stabilization automatically and will then ensure that Gyro data is being collected. Once you've done that, you can import that into Gyroflow. I've actually created a video which is quite an in-depth way of how you capture your footage, how to gyro stabilize it on Gyroflow and so on. It goes through all aspects. So if you haven't seen it, there's a link in the description below. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. If you did, remember to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell and all that jazz. I'm just going to pack up and go back to work now. So until the next time, happy flying and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.